Order, order. Oh, uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce, I object. Wait a second. You are the one who suggested I cross-examine the parent, Mr. Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. It was a fucking sarcasm, you fucking moron. <sighs> well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. I mean, that's what I would have had, because I know the parrot's gonna t say his name. Because it's a fucking parrot. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still wanna go through with your little game. Yeah, I'm down. Let the parrot take the stand. I'll cross-examine her here on it. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Von Karma has rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. A fucking sees parrot. Oh my god. Squawk. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. You are in contempt of court. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Uh -huh, very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Who's your owner? I hope it's just nothing. Oh, ho, oh, oh, squawk. <laughs> oh, certainly the most concise testimony we've heard so far. <laughs> Very well, begin your cross-examination. Right. Nick, what are you going to do, Nick? I don't know. <laughs> what do we do, Maya? Oh. <laughs> Who's your owner? Oh my god. I'm gonna fucking press this parrot. Squawk. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna present this. <laughs> your honor, that statement contradicts the evidence. <laughs> what? <laughs> it does, I don't see anything contradictory. Uh, really? See, I was using the evidence like, oh, you have to say Polly or whatever. Objection for real. I to thank you for pointing make accusations, Mr. Wright. Oops. It didn't go so well. Yeah, okay, that was funny. Okay, I'll take the one. It was hilarious. Witness, you cannot just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Why, you talk to her. Right. Uh, what do I say? Have we forgotten what's your name? Have we forgotten something? Remember, two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk. Don't forget the L6, Squawk. If I can get Coat Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with the L6. Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello, Squawk. That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something we forgot. Hello, hello. Oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. It's ridiculous. Why won't she say it? <laughs> Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when asked if we'd forgotten to anything? Hmm. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge uh, her owner is Mr. Y Yogi. Press. Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to a parrot. Well, I guess we should try to get some more information. Yeah, okay. Hello, hello. Witness, you can't just... Okay. Uh, what's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, Squawk. Mr. Wright, I think we've established that the parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with our owner's identity? Of course. Yes, it does. Huh, <laughs> fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will pr prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen. We're not here to answer the question of who is the care 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 caretaker. 
We're here to prove that he is a Yanni Yogi. All we have to do with the name is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name of the is this. He answers to the name Polly. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I had hoped you would have learned this by now. Making random guesses here is a waste of court time. Uh oh, wrong again. That is all. Witness, continue testimony. What's the thing that ties it? Is there anything like that? Anything like Polly? Oh! Oh my god! Oh, fuck! I didn't even remember that part. Okay, fucking Christ. Jesus, I'm so glad I didn't actually take a point on me. I would have never fucking found that. Holy fuck. That's a fucking nuke right there. Of course. No, I got this. Because Von Karma didn't take this fucking info. DL6. Here you go. DL6 case file. That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Third page. Show us to stop wasting our time. <laughs> you got really, really aggressive there, buddy. Page three. Last sentence. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in the file is the information connected to the spirit's name? To the suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after that, he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide. Hmm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He remembered the name of his fiance who committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. <laughs> ah, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? It depends. What does she look like? She's only seven years old. Oh, God. Uh, da, 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 da. I take that last sentence back. What does she look like in 11 years? Call me that. Hmm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more, if we can just find, get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Hmm. Very well, witness, you may continue. <laughs> oh. Let's, uh, get the, uh... Save, let's see if we can get something out of that. Actually, I do want to see if there's anything else. Uh, nothing there. Let's check the, this stuff. Elevator, one bullet through the heart. Oh, 1228. That's the that's the date of this fucking murder. Oh, I fucking nailed you. You're a, you're on a fucking cross, buddy. Done. I'm gonna crucify your fucking ass on here. Maybe I'll get her to say the number that's safe. I'm safe. Why? Let's just uh, try to get her to say something, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? 1228, 1228, Spock. My, what a reckless baron. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. It definitely does. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha, huh, ridiculous. How can a number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? DL6. The first page. Read it, buddy. DL6 case file. Again. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright. See, the problem is he's luring us to bring it up so he can then jump on it and talk about Edgeworth. Mr. Wright, where's the file, which is uh, rela something related? It's the case summary. It's on the case summary page. Top of the page. Case summary. Specifically, the date on which the DL6 occurred. The day of the incident, December 28th. Well, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 12 slash 
28. He used the date of the DL6 as the number of his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see, it certainly is an interesting coincidence. At this point, right, we got a, you know, we got three, uh, uh, or two at least, coincidences. We're starting to get into the, eh, this is kind of too many. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Ah, this is not tangible truth. I sent my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm a number one. You're a fucking idiot. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. It's a mere coincidence, that's all. True, there is a, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Well, it's more it's like three times or a guaranteed pattern. You can connect you can connect two, any dot, two dots together. Three is where it's impossible. Well, it, it starts getting to it, the impossible levels. Summon the caretaker to the, of the boat shop immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. Oh, fuck. I've accomplished what I needed to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real yogi, I think. And I finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true nature. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as bailiff in this very court. Order, order. Yanni Yogi. So, what is it you killed? Uh, is, was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame this. Uh, I this Miles Edgeworth for his death. Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me I would make it would make me innocent. Give me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plane was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years, this was it. Finally a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond, Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a minute. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. There you go, trial over. Guilty. We're done. Swan Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent, in this case at least. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved, but it's still your clear to suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This case fine this court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not to guilty on all charges. You may go. I'm tired. I'm gonna take my nap. That is all, the court is adjourned. Did someone just say objection? I need to take a shit. It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. The revenge for what? Edgeworth, what the fuck are you doing? Shut the fuck up! Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was a murderer in DL6. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh, what should I do? Raise an objection. 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 The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. 
I didn't, didn't something like this happen yesterday too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. If this does not relate to the case, this has no point in bearing to be in this courtroom. Because the second he mentions DL6, objection, this has no relevance to the case at all. This is not a trial about the DL6 incident. This is a trial about the murder of Robert Hammond. Not then. He can be arrested for that, and we can have a trial separate from that. But right now, it has not anything to do with it. For 15 years, I've had a reoccurring dream, a nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But no, I know I w it wasn't a dream. Yana Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? In the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of it, which ends today. The culprit is me. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should not deal with this. <sighs> it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. No. We hold a trial for a later date. We try this man for his crime 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to take a third minute recess. During this time, I'll consider the appropriate course of action to take. I mean, that's when I slam my desk, and I just say, Your Honor, this has no bearing on the court case we have today. We have other cases we have to get to. We've already been overbooked, and we have no point in revisiting a 15-year-old case that expires today. I believe my defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is slightly under too much stress and is hallucinating. Thus, we should take his testimony with a grain of salt. Court is adjourned. So we just have to get it past this day, because then it fucking closes. Well, actually, no, once the court starts to over, it doesn't matter. Uh, defendant lobby number two. Sorry, right? I just wasted all of your effort. Nah, no shit, buddy. I'm gonna throw you off a bridge. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, pal. I mean, you, you kill your dad? I didn't want to believe in myself, detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy. Just crazy. <sighs> Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. Yeah, he's fucked. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's just, it's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. Like, I'm sorry? Someone says that in the middle of court. Yeah, you're, you're just fucking guilty. Like, unless you can say that he lied, and then you're in just, you know, more shit. Or you can just say he's fucking insane. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent, trust me. Right. Love you, man. December 28th, 2.30 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Then I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crimes. Let's begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examination. Statue of limitation on DL6 runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objection? No, Your Honor. On karma, who knew this was going to happen from... Who knew you knew this was going to happen from the start? From the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, prosecuting attorney. 
Mr. Edgeworth. Fifteen years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That would be the key, if, but only if it, I can get it back to get it to work. Well, he said he threw it. There's, n I mean, it's possible for an accidental gun discharge by hitting it against something. But the odds of it happening is very unlikely. It is unlikely that it got lodged in his heart. The bullet, that is. And when he threw it, it's, I think it's very suspect, to say the least. Please, please. The DL6. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake shook, struck, t trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell on my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. <laughs> the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, uh, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. DL6. That day I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake trapped us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure. Let's uh, press a little bit on this. What do you do then? I was nine year a oh, nine year old boy. What at the time what could I do? I was trembling and uh, scared trembling in the corner. But then Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at uh, Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Twice. Did he know it was a pistol when he threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot in the screen. The gun fired once. Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. Wasn't there two shots? I, I believe it was two. It was either two or three. One bullet found in the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Two shots. That's what I thought. Now, Hedgeworth. So I know you're not telling me the, you know, you didn't actually know what happened that day. A gunshot and uh, that horrible scream. That scream. It was a terrible scream, I remember it to this day. A moment later, there was a single gunshot. Oh no. <sighs> gotta, gotta throw this fucking stack of paper on you. And are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the research uh, rescuers came. I see. But that doesn't make sense. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You can enjoy dragging out that file. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? 
I don't accept that evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. What the fuck? Is How about you fucking read it? Which page? Uh, it's the victim data. Well, look at the victim data on the, in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth uh, only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shots? God, it's been a while since I actually read that uh, file thing. I should have fucking read it. Ugh. Well, I mean, even like, uh, like I said, like the, even like if it is an accidental firing, it's very unlikely it would get lodged in his heart like that. Even on the accidental fire. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? No. Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware. 15 years, uh, the incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with the incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. Oh, uh, that's actually not true. If you look at this photo, you can see a bullet hole right there, which is the accidental fire. The bullet was lodged in his heart, so it couldn't have possibly went out his back and caused damage on the window. Think again, Mr. Von Karma. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. Uh, the murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of the shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Yeah. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Until go all of it. No, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after we've seen the evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. You have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is re relayed to the incident. Well, I mean, if we look at here, we can see a oh, dead body. There's two. Let's try that. Look at this photograph. This photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. And plus, if he was shot on that window, you'd see blood spot a splatter on said window if it actually had tumbled through his body. So already you can tell that even without the, ex the bullet found in his heart, you'd be able to look at the window and see that there's no blood on the window. Thus, he wasn't shot against the window. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me guess to get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. I can't point to both at the same time. Okay, right there's one. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there's also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the well, murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Gre uh, Edgeworth fired that second shot. Order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot uh, he fired rang out. In conclusion, he must have. Uh, he must. Uh, we must agree that the second uh, the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but uh, who else could have done that? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies uh, got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DLC 6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary page, that's on page 1. Look at what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. 
If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Why? Because the second bullet doesn't exist. The bullet that, that claimed that Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. It's the truth of this matter. The whole truth. Uh, it was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. What? Someone's elbow? Order, I have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us, because they're quite certain that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, Mr. Von Karma says there, the second bullet fired was not found. Uh, it is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. 